Hi guys, so today I'm going to talk about rave and club safety and what I have a lot of people ask me on my YouTube channel is, oh, well, I want to go to rave. How do I go to rave? Oh my gosh, I don't think that there are any in my se in my town, blah, 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 you know, things like that. But the people who are asking me are like 13. That's really scary. 13-year-old going to a rave? You guys think that it's all rainbows and it's all pretty and everybody loves each other and it's awesome. And sometimes it is. But there are a lot of dangers that go into it. And there, there's a lot of things that can hurt you. And I don't think that you think about it or that you realize it. You're just like, I want to go to rave. I want to go to rave. But seriously, you're 13. That's legally not even you're allowed to go to a rave. It doesn't matter if it says it's all ages. Generally, with curfew laws, it's actually legal if you're under 18. So, you need to look into that, you need to look into the laws in your town, see if you can even go to a party until you're 18. But, you know, I also get people who are like 13, 14, 15 that have told me, oh, I've already been to a party. Whether they're lying or not, I don't know. But that's really scary. That 13, like, little kids are going to parties. People get mugged, they get drugged, raped, all kinds of stuff. It's just the dangers and the horrible things that can happen to you, like, scares me so much. And so that's why I'm making this video. I'm making this video to keep you informed, to let you know the ins and outs of going to raves, basic safety tips, and things that I've observed that people do. Um, some bad signs, bad things to, like, things to avoid when you look at, when you're thinking about going to a party versus good signs and good things to look for. With this video, I just want to make sure that there's not another person hurt, that another person doesn't have to die because they made a silly mistake because they didn't know when they weren't informed. And so this, this video is going to go in three steps. It's going to be things that you do before a rave, things that happen at a rave, and things that happen after the rave. And it's going to go in sequence, and it's going to go to um, basic things that can happen, you know, dangerous things that you might run into, and how to fix them. And there's a huge list of things that I could go down, and I don't, I haven't probably even come close to all of them, but the, the ones that are most prominent, the things that I see all the time, you know, that's what I put out there. And if you have any, any put, anything that you've run into, any problems or mistakes that you've had, Write them down in the comments. Please share with people because this is, you know, educating everybody. So sharing your experiences, you know, these are just mine. And I'm probably going to be looking down on the screen a little bit because I have it written down all on my laptop. So I apologize for that and ahead, ahead of time. Um, but before the rave. It, it is extremely crucial that you make sure uh, that you plan for the worst. And I know you guys are going to be like, oh, well, you're being a little paranoid. But seriously plan for the worst. So if something does happen, you know that you're going to be safe and that you're going to get through and it's going to be okay. Um, first thing that you need to do if you even think about going to rave, do research. Research, research, research. Looking in and having enough information is extremely important. It's probably the most important thing that you can do. Um, look into who's throwing parties in your town. Instead of looking at, oh, hey, look, there's a party there. Let's go to that party. Look into who's throwing it. You know, what is this crew? Who are they? What other parties have they thrown? What's their reputation like? Ask other people who have gone to their parties. Hey, what was this party like? You know, things like that. Also, you want to look into your venues, where the parties are, who's throwing them, where they're located, everything like that. And also, look into the reputation of the venue. Does it have a bad reputation for drugs? Does it have a bad reputation because people continually get hurt there? Is Do they have security? Don't be afraid to even ask these production companies. Don't be afraid to ask the venue owners. Because you can probably find them on Facebook and ask them. Ask them questions. You know, because it's better that you know information up front and beforehand so you can make an informed decision on whether you're going to go to that party. Another problem that I've seen over and over and over again is people go to a party even if they don't want to go to that party or they don't like the venue, but they'll go to a party because of all their friends are going there. And the problem with this especially is if you don't like that venue because you feel unsafe or if you don't like the people who are throwing that party because every single time you go to their party something bad happens, 
do not go there. I don't care if all your friends are going there. There are so many other parties out there, generally, that you can go anywhere else. You can go somewhere else that's going to be more safe. It's super easy to go and make new friends. It's, it's not a big deal. Your safety is not worth any party. You know, your life is not worth a party. Even if you don't plan on taking drugs, it is extremely important that you're informed on what they are, what they do, and what they look like. Because let's say one of your friends takes something and then they have a bad reaction, they start to overdose on that. But if you know what that drug is, you might be able to help them. You can call an ambulance and let them know, hey, they took this so the EMTs can make sure that your friend survives and that your friend doesn't get hurt. That is extremely vital. Being educated, knowing about drugs. I don't care if you're going to do them, if you're not going to do them. Know what they are, know what they do. Also, a, a, a huge thing that I've noticed is people don't know how to deal with an overdose. That is one big problem. Like, they might know about drugs or whatever, but they don't know how to deal with an overdose. And that's something that I think every single person needs to know how to do, especially if, if you're going to a rave. Because that is where a lot of drug use is prominent. It even, even happens at concerts. So if you're going to go to concerts, that's a good idea too. Just know how to deal with a drug overdose because you can end up saving someone's life because you know exactly what to do and you responded ahead of time. Um, I'm also going to leave a whole bunch of links down below of different places where you can find out how to deal with an overdose or how you can find out more information on drugs and all different kinds of stuff. So I'm going to leave that down there. Also, things like Dance Safe also doesn't, they don't just deal with drugs or how to deal with overdoses. They also deal with like hearing, which is a very important thing. Because um, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, that sound is ridiculously loud and it can actually damage your hearing. So they've got information on that and how you can protect that and any other safety tips just in general on their website or their websites. It's always good. Um, also, know your rights. Be informed on what you're going to do. Because let's say that you're leaving, you get pulled over by a cop, or if a venue, um, like if their security is harassing you or something going on, know what they can and cannot do to you. That is a very important thing. Um, also, in your phone, have a number for a locksmith or a taxi cab. So in case you lock the keys in your car, or if your ride bails on you and you get stranded there, that's really bad, so having those numbers is something that is a very good idea, so you don't be stranded. Oh, in case something happens to you or whatever, it's always good to have in your phone your mother or your father's number, um, like clearly written, just have mom, dad, or you can have an ICE number, I-C-E, it's uh, in case of emergency, and so that's going to be the person's phone number, and so when you're looking through your phone, let's say that, like, something happened, you got an accident or whatever, they go through, they see that, they can call, and they can get a hold of your family. So that's also something important. Um, always have a debit card or extra cash on you. Extremely important, because again, if you get stranded, your ride leaves you. Um, let's even say that the cover for going to the party is more than you thought it was. Well, then you've got extra cash. You're okay. You can get into the party. Um, also, drinks, if you get dehydrated, whatever, you can always go buy water. So, extra money. Always good. Um, if you need a bag, you always want to get a small bag or uh, an animal backpack, something. Some venues won't let you bring in bags, but the ones that do, generally, if it's a small animal backpack or if it's a little small purse or something, they'll let you have it. Um, fanny packs. I have a Tinkerbell one. I put my candy on it, but that's, you know, something that you can use. Oh, in your car, hide your valuables. Like, let's say, uh, I don't know why you'd bring a laptop with you, or maybe a GPS or something. Um, hide it, put it away, lock your car, make sure that it's out of sight, because people will break into your car. It's happened numerous times, especially if it's downtown. People will break into your car and steal your crap. So, make sure it's all hidden away. Uh, go with a group of friends. A group of friends is a fantastic idea because you can all watch out for each other, make sure that you're okay throughout the night. Um, if it's a group of girls, always have at least one guy with you because something happens, 
he can beat someone up. <laughs> or at least protect you guys. Always have a designated driver. Let's say that you're over 21, whatever, you can drink. Um, you always need to have someone who will drive you home. And that person has to be sober out throughout the night. Just someone who will drive you home and that you will be safe and it will be okay. Or if you're going to take drugs or whatever, always have designated drivers. Have a solid ride home. I've seen this numerous times where people will be like, okay, I'm going to a party, I got a ride there, but I don't have a ride home. Or the ride bails from them, or something like that. And then they end up either getting a ride from someone that they kind of know, or even strangers. That's really scary. You don't even know this person, and you're going to expect them to drive you home. They could kidnap you, they could rape you, mug you, there, there's so much that can happen with that. Please, please, please plan to make sure that does not happen. And if you have a taxi cab in your, uh, in your phone, or if you've got extra cash on you, then that shouldn't even be a problem. You see where I'm going with this? Everything, if you follow safety rules, things like that, just general suggestions, then if you run into another problem later on, hopefully you can prevent that from happening. Um, this is one that people fight me all the time, but it is a valid complaint. Uh, dressing provocatively. People were like, oh, well, it's my self-expression and I can dress however I want to and blah, blah, blah. But it's actually a safety hazard. It doesn't come down to, oh, it's self-expression when someone's trying to rape you. You know, it's, it's bad. And yes, it is unacceptable and that no one should try to rape you, even if you're buck naked running around. I don't care. It's unacceptable for someone to do that, but in reality, it's a safety hazard because if you're dressing provocatively versus someone who's dressed like jeans t-shirt, people are more likely to uh, hit on you and try to take advantage of you. So I'm just going to put that out there, you know, personally, I don't care if you're running around naked, but at least be 18 when you're you know, um, having a meeting spot for your friends. Uh, like, let's say every hour you're going to meet by the front door. That's always a good thing because you, you can make sure everyone's okay and that everyone's accounted for and that there are no problems throughout the night. So let's say that you go to meet up and one of your friends don't meet up. You can go find them, make sure that they're okay, and it solves a lot of problems. So check in frequently. Also, uh, in your group of friends... Having someone who is accountable for you is a very, very, very good idea. Um, let's say you have six people, so that's three pairs of people. They make sure that you make good decisions, that you don't do something stupid, and that you don't get yourself hurt. So, at the rave, what are things that you can do to help yourself and make sure that you're safe at a rave? If you have a, a bad feeling about the venue or the people, like around it, sitting around or whatever, don't go. There's nothing wrong with going to another party or even going home. What matters most is your safety. If you can see that a bouncer can be paid off to let in underage kids, that is a very bad sign. Because that right there is illegal. They're letting in underage kids. And if they're breaking one law, Think about all the other laws that they could be breaking. Think about the lack of security that might be there and the different things that could possibly get you hurt. Here's a good sign when you go up. If you notice that they're checking IDs, checking bags, patting people down, that is a very, very good sign because it means that they value your safety. And I don't care if you want to do drugs, if you don't want to do drugs, this is one rule that I highly, highly, highly encourage is that if you go to a rave and someone offers you drugs and tries to sell you drugs at that rave, say no. Because you don't know what's in it, you don't know these people, you don't know if it's actually what they're trying to sell you. That is something extremely important. Say no. While I do not encourage drug use, I rave sober, always rave sober, always will rave sober. I encourage you guys to do the same thing because it's the easiest way to make sure that you're not hurt, you're safe. But I always, I, I understand that people will make decisions like that and they will take that risk, but I feel that if you're going to take that risk, you must at least be informed on the risk that you're taking. And so that's why 
the next section is all going to be talking about drugs and how to reduce a lot of risks like don't buy from people at a venue that you don't know. Well, even if you do know them, don't buy it at a venue. That's a bad idea. Also, don't bring drugs into the venue. This is one thing that people fight me all the time and I don't understand why it's a big idea. You have a house, you have a car, that's where your drugs need to stay. When you bring them into the venue, it is not only your decision and it's not only your problem. When you bring them in, you now have put the people who are running that party and the venue owners at risk. You've also put everybody in that party at risk of being searched because you got drugs. And you also have that party at risk of being shut down because you brought drugs in. Don't make your selfish act the reason the entire party gets shut down. Also, um, never take something that you don't know what it is. So like, let's say that someone sold you a random pill or you found a random pill or whatever, don't take it. You don't know what it is. You don't know how you're going to react to it. It's a bad idea all around. Just bad idea. Don't do it. Um, drugs are not candy. You do not take like 20 of them. That is a bad idea. What I've seen a lot of people think, especially younger people, I've, I've even had someone ask me, to be a true river, do you have to do drugs? I mean, seriously? You're going to ask me that? No. You don't have to be drugs to be a serious raver. And just because you do a whole bunch of drugs doesn't make you hardcore. It makes you fucking stupid. Because you could kill yourself. With every single drug, if you mix them, you can end up having a synergistic effect. Which is, you can take one drug by itself, it's fine. Take this drug by itself, it's okay. You mix them together, and bad shit happens. Please don't do it. If you're going to take something, take only that. And don't mix it with alcohol. Please do not mix it with alcohol. Take one thing. And if it's the first time that you're taking it, only take half. Because if you have a bad reaction, it won't be as bad. Also, if you're going to take drugs and you're unexperienced, babysitter. A babysitter is a very good idea. Having someone who will sit there and uh, watch you, make sure you make good decisions, and that you will be okay, and that you're not overdosing, and if you do overdose, they will know how to handle it. Please get someone who is experienced, who knows exactly what they're doing, and knows a little bit of first aid. Please. To make sure that you don't get hurt, and that they can take care of you. Um, if you feel uncomfortable with a party, or their venue, or something's going on, you can leave. It's not a problem. It's better to leave than to stay there and wait for something bad to happen. Always, if you're going to go to the bathroom, go with a friend. Because you don't know what's going on. I've been to venues where there's guys in the girls' bathroom. There's no doors on the stall. Toilet paper's on the ground. It's nasty and sturdy. And it's, it's really scary. If you're going to buy a drink, make sure that the top of it is either sealed or that the bartender makes it in front of you. If there's the bar here and they make it below and you can't see what they're doing, or if they're turned around and you can't see what they're doing, don't drink it, don't buy it. Because you don't know if that bartender slipped something into your drink, you don't have any idea. So please, if you don't see it, and if it's not sealed up, don't drink it. Also, if someone gives you something, be like, here, drink this, or here, here's a bottle of water. If it's not sealed, don't drink it. Again, someone might drug you. And this is a actually valid complaint because it does happen. It happens all the time. Um, I've had it happen to friends. You need to make sure that your drinks are safe. Also, if you ever put your drink down, do not pick it up. Do not drink it again. You can't. Basically, it's gone. It's gone. Also, if something falls on the floor, don't pick it up. It's gone. I don't care. It was the queen's engagement ring. It is gone. That floor is nasty. You do not want to pick it up. Um, <coughs> so... Be aware of that. Also, with drinks, what you want to do is, um, you've got your drink, and you want to cover it with your hand. Because you could be sitting here talking, and let's say someone's talking with their hands, they're really flamboyant, but you know what? They can drop something in your drink. It's happened. Be careful. If you've got an open drink, cover it. If someone's harassing you, if someone keeps bugging you, someone keeps grabbing you, whatever, you need to talk to security, and you need to talk to the bartender. If they choose not to do anything about it, get the hell out of there because that's obviously a very bad place to be. Generally, at a good venue, you're not going to be harassed by anybody and if you are, something will be done about it immediately. Um, if your friend is overdosing, if something bad is happening, 
please, please, please call 911. Call for an ambulance. You need to. Don't be like, oh, we're just going to sit here and we're going to wait and it's going to be okay because you're just, you're going to get over it and it, it'll be okay. When you wait, the longer that you wait, people can die. And it happens all the time because people have decided that, oh, okay, well, we're not going to call an ambulance. We're just going to let it go and you'll be okay. You'll be fine. What happens a lot of the time is people are like, oh, well, I don't want the party to be busted because my friend's overdosing. Oh, no. And so they don't call 911. But the thing is that no party is worth your friend's life. That's ridiculous. That's a really sad reason. Also, if it's if it's an extremely bad case, don't pick them up, put them in the car, and try to drive them off. Stupid idea. Wait there, because an ambulance can get there a hell of a lot faster than you probably can. Also, if you're told to leave and that medical attention is your responsibility, stay in the parking lot and call 911. It's smarter to stay there than to try to leave and get your own medical attention. If the road is shut down due to overcapacity or some other issue, please do not yell obscene things at the police. The police are just doing their job. They're trying to they're not trying to ruin your party, they're just trying to make sure that everyone's safe. If you're mad that the party gets shut down, don't take it out on the police. It's not the police fault that the party got shut down. The party got shut down because of the people throwing the party and the venue staff. They allowed way too many people into that party, or whatever the reason is. They didn't have their permits, whatever. You know, that is all in party planning, venue, that's all their stuff. It's not the police. The police just enforce what they're supposed to do to make sure that you guys are safe. So after the rave, just because you made it through the party, you're totally fine, nothing bad happened, doesn't mean that you're out of the way of danger. There are still things that happen in parking lots all the time. Um, after leaving an event, make sure that the parking lot's clear and that there are no sh um, if there's like shady people standing around your car or whatever, just go back inside. You know, hang out a little bit, talk to some friends, and then maybe go to your car when they leave. Because it's not, it, you don't want to get mugged. It, it's not fun. When you're walking to your car, make sure you have your keys in your hand. Because the less time that you spend standing in the parking lot, the less time it is that someone has to come and try to hurt you. Uh... Also, check around your vehicle, make sure that there's nobody hiding or whatever, no one trying to come and steal your car or whatever. Um, if you feel unfit to drive, if you don't feel like you can drive home successfully, there's nothing wrong with calling a cab. It is better to call a cab, leave your car there, and come get it the next day than it is to drive home and end up killing yourself or somebody else. It's also why you should plan ahead and have a designated driver. Uh, never leave with someone you don't know. You can always call a cab or you can always find another way home. Do not l rely on a stranger to drive you home because they can and will probably take advantage of you. One of the problems with taking drugs is that it impairs your judgment so you don't make good decisions. A lot of the time, especially with like ecstasy and stuff, you're like, oh my god, everyone's my best friend. I love all of you guys. And then you'll go home with someone you don't know and something bad happens. Also, another thing. Drugs can also make you more inclined to engage in sexual behavior. So condoms are a very good idea. Have them. They're good. Because it's better to be safe than sorry later. Um, if something does happen to you, like you do end up getting raped, mugged, drugged, robbed, whatever, in the parking lot, or even in the club, whatever, doesn't matter where it happens, Immediately call the police if you need medical attention, call for an ambulance, or if it's not super serious, you might be able to drive yourself to the hospital, but I recommend that you just call an ambulance. Um, but the best thing that you can do is if something happens like that, file a police report. A lot of pe a lot of people that I've talked to that bad things have happened to don't file a police report, and they don't talk about it, and they keep it really quiet. And that's one of the worst things that you can do because it allows these people who are doing bad things to continue on what they're doing. And it allows uh, dangerous people to be left on our streets and dangerous people to be left in our parties. So let's say that you've got one guy who ended up getting mugged and he didn't file police report and he didn't do anything about it. And you have another person who just got mugged. And what if they were mugged by the same person? But if the first person would have filed that police report, it wouldn't have happened to the second or third person. Seriously is inc incredibly important 
because you can stop other people from being harmed. Or you can help them catch somebody. Please, please, please do not stay silent about what happened to you. If something happens to you, tell everybody else. Say, hey, this happened to me over here at this party. You know, watch out for you guys. Because if you don't give anybody warning and you don't let them know what happens, you let them walk right into a dangerous situation over and over again. Please try to help keep other people safe. Watch out for them. Watch out for your friends. We need everybody to to be safe because the less that's said about the dangers that are going on and the less educated people are and the less informed they are, the more people who will continue to be hurt. And I'm just watching it and even it's not even just in Houston, it's in other cities and stuff. Like just more and more people either dying or being hurt. It it's really scary and I aim to try to prevent this. I hope that these safety tips have helped you a little bit, you know and to make sure that when you do choose to go to a party that you put these right safety procedures in place and make sure that you and your friends and everybody else will be safe and have a good time. And I love every single freaking one of you and I hope that you guys all can go to raves and have fun and it be safe and not get hurt. And I want you guys to all have a good experience, but you also have to realize that they are dangerous. You can get hurt, but if you're informed and you know exactly what to do, you can stop this from happening. So, bye guys.